everyone. Um, I'm Erika Bucci and I'm delighted to present this panel um, hosted by uh, Women in Hospitality and Travel Technology. Um, the topic we are discussing today is the state of the mice industry, which is really close to my heart and I'm passionate about it because I used to work in hotels for 12 years in mice, in meetings and event sales, and then for the last six years in technology supporting hotels and sales teams uh, with my sales. So first with um, Amadeus, Belfi, then uh, Sivant and Noland. Um, so I would like to actually ask our experts as well who are joining me on this uh, session to introduce themselves to you. Uh, so I'm not sure, Heather, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I'm Heather Hart. I'm an independent consultant focusing on meetings and events, revenue management strategy, uh, having spent a a life in uh, in hospitality, hotel management, um, and really focusing on uh, strategy and how we can make more from our meeting space. Great. Ladies, Sabrina? <laughs> Hi, I'm Sabrina Myers. Uh, I am founder of Hot Hospitality Exchange. My background is I spent half of my career in hotel my sales and the other half of it as an event planner uh, working for event agencies booking mice events um, and currently hot hospitality exchange is my platform where i um, do social media marketing coaching and uh, create content from a event planner's perspective thank you uh, linda Hello, my name is Linda Beaker. I'm founder of About Partners. Um, About Partners is a representation company that really looks to help either independent hotels um, or independent chains, um, really looking in the my space um, as well as the corporate space and leisure. And for me, it's just about giving a platform for those hotels because I truly believe that the independents have to sometimes work a little bit harder. Um, and so giving them that ability to be able to get get more business and increase their revenue um, is what my passion is. Thank you. Jonathan, would you like to go next? Hi, I'm Jonathan Liu. I lead the marketing and revenue strategy for GLH Hotels. We're a collection of addresses across central London, including the brands Amber Hotels, the Royal Horse Guards and the Hard Rock Hotel London. Great, thank you. Uh, Jonas? Hi everyone, it's Jonas here, CEO and founder of Meeting Package based in Helsinki, Finland. Uh, Meeting Package is a platform, technology platform that allows hotels and event venues to sell their meeting rooms as easy as they sell their bedrooms today. So integrating directly to their property management solutions or sales and catering, creating a middle layer, which we call a venue and sales management platform and facilitating an online transactional journey to the customer facing platforms. If it's the venues or hotels own website, or a distribution channel like CWT. Great, thank you so much. Um, we have limited time, of course, as always. So I would like to really jump into my first uh, few questions. And interestingly, even though we are discussing mice, the future of mice, I would say, uh, I, I would like to go back a little bit into the, the recent past and um, ask your opinion on the pre-pandemic situation um, of the mice industry. Um, how, how, how would you reflect on the challenges really that the industry was already facing without COVID-19? Um, and I will give you my take on it or my biggest kind of concern, um, especially because of, uh, you know, working with hotels and sales teams a lot. So their feedback was to me over the last couple of years all the time that they are you know, getting an overflow of inbound leads. They have to manage various uh, RFP channels. Uh, they all have different formats. Um, so all of these inquiry platforms were hard to, to, to maintain. And they were always under a huge pressure to just, you know, quickly respond rather than actually offer a personalized service. Um, and I think that then impacted on conversion. So um, I, I'm not sure who would like to start. Maybe Linda, can I pick on you on that occasion and, and let me know what your view on this or maybe, you know, anything else that you see as a challenge that, that used to be a big, big issue in the past? I think um, for me, I think that, you know, um, one thing about the, tr the travel industry has really got to do with technology. And I think that, you know, technology has been forced on us. So, you know, now people are doing a lot of hybrid meetings and before, I mean, we all know, knew that Zoom existed. Um, you know, we all knew that different platforms existed, but would we use it? No, um, you know, because we wanted to hang on to, you know, the face-to-face -face events. But I think that, you know, with with all this happening, we have found new ways to connect, um, you know, and 
this is what the future will look like, I think. Um, a lot of internal meetings might not get sign off. Um, so it will be more client facing meetings. So we will have to adapt. Um, and it's quite sad that it's been forced on us, um, this um, um, adaptation. That's true. So in terms of the, 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 the pre-pandemic challenges from, let's say, um, a, a planner's point of view, Sabrina, what is your view on that? What kind of challenges you were facing and your clients? Well, I've always really worked uh, in boutique event agencies, so not the big boys. Um, and I've always preferred to go directly to hotels, not through Cvent or through a lead generation system, um, just because I always felt that I wasn't getting what I needed through the templates or whatever that were set in place. So I would have preferred to just call someone or send them a detailed email on my requirements. And I always felt that what I got back from doing that was better. Um, so I don't know uh, if that is something that will change. I know that technology is being embraced uh, furiously by the industry at the moment. Um, but also from I do a lot from the social media perspective and one thing pre-pandemic was that hotels weren't really embracing social media for mice in terms of showcasing their properties and its mice capabilities to the level that it was showcasing, for example, leisure or business travel. Um, and I really hope that that's something that does change because in terms of revenue generation, I would imagine mice is way stronger. So why wouldn't you? That's great feedback, actually. So now that we are turning to revenue, and I think we have quite a few people who can who can add to that. Um, what is um, you know everyone's uh, thought on um, you know pre-pandemic challenges when it comes to the revenue size, especially mice revenue, if you can call it that way. So I don't know if, if uh, Jonathan, you will, would like to start, or I think over the the previous two or three years, we've seen a huge leap in the ability of analytics and and demand for meeting and events. I think from the rooms perspective, uh, even ancillary revenues like spa, it's been there for quite some time and we've had a lot of advancement. But meeting and events has really been the, sort of the last area that's caught up and we're only just getting there now, understanding how we can connect systems together before we can even get to the point of forecasting demand and, and, and truly revenue managing that space. I don't know, Heather, do you have anything to add from your point of view? Sure, I think I, I, I absolutely echo what uh, what Jonathan said, but I, I think in hotels, particularly, not so much in conference centres and, and standalone venues, um, there's so much emphasis both in technology, investment, uh, understanding and strategy uh, focused on bedroom sales. Uh, and meetings and events seems is often the poor relation and doesn't have the same investment in either technology or expertise Revenue managers rarely take ownership. Jonathan's a great exception, um, but rarely take ownership. It is changing for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of revenue managers say, we, "Well, we don't touch M and E. Uh, it's all about the bedrooms." Um, and that comes from the top of organisations. It's a cultural thing in organisations. Um, I think many hotels don't understand the value of their meetings and event space. They don't know how to measure it. There aren't the KPIs, um, and, and they re and they don't have good data. Uh, you know, all of the systems, the diary management systems, often information doesn't get put in those systems. Uh, and so getting good revenue numbers out, getting good data to be able to forecast demand and all those things is just lagging behind so much. Uh, and, you know, that, and that was pre-pandemic. And obviously, you know, demand is definitely going to change going forward. But without those fundamentals, um, it, it's, a, it, it's a long way back. Mm. I see. So um, when it comes to analytics now, turning to Jonas, I understand you focus a lot on that. So what would you say was for you maybe uh, the biggest challenge before the pandemics that you saw with hotels, you know, using analytics? I think the biggest, uh, as Heather said, is the understanding of the uh, current numbers. So there was no sense of urgency to kind of jump to the technology, to change your infrastructure, to change your existing processes. And what we've seen now pre be the pre the crisis and pre covid is that when things weren't digitalized and when this crisis hit everything was human driven and sales driven and what that means is that uh, now during the crisis when people are furloughed or laid off 
partly our hotels are closed. You cannot even sell the future. And with future, I mean even 2021, 2022. And uh, the problem is that there's nobody re reacting to these RFPs. There's no human power to actually reply to these offers. And that's kind of the beauty of digitalization and automation, which many hoteliers have woken up during this pandemic that, hey, we have certain pieces of our business area that this, this revenue is close to zero due to the fact that we don't have any salespeople handling that. And that's the thing that we we seen kind of pre, pre-COVID that uh, wasn't in the top urgency of the hotel, but now due to the crisis has been coming much, much higher into the top priorities. That's a very valid point. Um, agree with that. Um, I will actually take a little bit of a shift to the planner side. So Sabrina, sorry, but I will probably put a little bit of pressure here on you, but I would like to give you some um, additional information here. So I'm not sure if you guys are following um, Sivan, they also have some good reports. So I actually looked up that June data which actually gives you know the the most important update which says that you know sourcing his training upwards for the last six weeks which i guess you know for any hotels on the call is a good sign mm -hmm. um larger meetings are actually the ones that are uh, becoming more and more um you know relevant within that uh, sourcing rather than the small ones which to me was very surprising i was thinking it will be really just the small ones and um lots of markets are trending up but also um the rates are actually going down uh, which maybe we expected, um, but you know, only up until Q2 2021. So um, what I'm really interested in, and I, I think everyone else, and and we'll now again yeah, turn to Sabrina, is uh, you know, based on all of that, uh, do you actually agree with this? Do you see the same kind of uptake in activities when it comes to you know the sourcing? And uh, I don't know, you know, how your clients are doing at the moment, but you know, are you processing any event briefs at the moment? And if yes, for when? So. At the moment, definitely not for the remainder of the year. Any sort of um, inquiries that I'm working on currently are for 2021, and they are actually more for, I would say, quarter, like from June onwards, 2021. So quarter three or end of quarter two. Um, the numbers actually, it's very interesting that Cvent reports that because I, um, I was also myself predicting that the clients would make them smaller. Um, but there hasn't been a number shift in terms of, um, okay, you know, we we brought one of the clients that I used to work with is a big technology company, and they were actually starting to bring all their departments together and create larger events. Um, but now I thought, okay, maybe they'll split it up again and they'll do separate conferences again. But no, it's uh, it is not the case. Uh, they are still continuing to doing the large events. Um, maybe it's from the point of view that we might as well do it once and get it over with instead of doing events over and over again um, and in that sense being able to manage the budget from the client side more effectively um, and also less uh, people getting involved uh, but yeah I would agree with most of those um, uh, notes from uh, Sivan. So you also agree that probably you know rates will be going down for a while um, even though everyone says don't drop rates, but it looks well, like everyone is dropping or has to. Everyone is dropping rates. I think um, I, I hear it a lot on the leisure side. There's a lot of hotels that are dropping their rates on the leisure side, um, especially from the five star category. Uh, but I think there's always going to be a point to which they drop it. They're not going to, you know, completely go nuts, I would say. Um, so it, I think it just really depends. It would be, I think it's going to be a situation where the four star properties are going to get a lot more competitive with the five star properties in terms of pricing. So from a planner's perspective, that might lead me to being able to afford a five star property for an event, whereas before I wouldn't normally have and I would have to put my event into a four star property. Um, so that's kind of how I would see it. But um, I don't think rates have dropped that much drastically. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if Jonathan, you have anything to say about the rates. Uh, how do you feel about you know maintaining, increasing, decreasing, especially of course when it comes to meetings and events? The the hardest challenge at the moment with meeting events for us is the the social distancing, and what that means to a, a meeting room in terms of occupancy and capacity. So we're trying to to work through and and find what's what's right for the hotels, but also what's right for the client to make sure that they're getting the most out of what we can provide them because our, our capacities have shrunk considerably based on, on this social distancing. Okay. 
Um, Linda, I know you are working actually on um, on a special project at the moment, um, and um, it is related to you know how to actually set up the correct procedures for that new normal of meetings and events. Um, <laughs> would you like to share anything about that? I think uh, one of the key things from um, a venue perspective, whether it's hotel or venue, is really looking at um, the standards that they're putting in place and how these standards are being communicated. And, um, you know, I was talking to someone earlier that said a hotel sent them a 25 page document of all the stuff they've done. You know, people are not really going to read that. So we need to make sure that the information that we're conveying is really short and sharp but it lets them know about what we're doing from a social distancing perspective, lets them know what we're doing for food standard, food hygiene, cleanliness. All these things are important to meeting planners. So even if they know this before they start to choose our venue, at least then they have a good understanding of what they can expect once they do an event. And I think that as an industry, the more we communicate in a very efficient way, then people will have the confidence to return back. Mm -hmm. can i just can i just pop in there i saw a brilliant thing on linkedin i won't name the hotel um but one of the best ways to illustrate that was a was a short video yes. that started in a function room so you could see the setup you could see exactly what it would look like walked all the way through the catering areas what lunch would be like uh you could see the hand gel you could see all the everything that had been put in place it was literally a couple of minutes long and you got everything you needed to know and i think those sorts of things if hotels start to create some of that uh, to get that message across there's nothing like uh, and, oh, and obviously site inspections are going to be harder uh, yeah. you know but people will be more reluctant to do site inspections so that visual cue um, to give people confidence I think is a fantastic way of doing it. Mm -hmm. I agree with Heather on that, just to chime in. Um, a lot of what I do is obviously on the social media side and advising hotels and brands within the industry. You know, the biggest question I get asked is what can we do in this time to get the guests and the clients back from the mice industry? Um, and it's, I always just say, create videos. Create videos for your website, create videos for your social media platforms and share them. Create videos to be shared on um, email marketing ways for different uh, clients in different markets. Because the only way you're going to be able to convince someone is if they actually visually see what they're going to experience and get when they book your product. So I agree with Heather. Yeah, that's true. I think, you know, they, you really have to rely on your own resources as a hotel because otherwise, you know, the uh, like we had a question on best practices from countries which reopened or, you know, region to region. But I think it's so different even within a country. There are, you know, divisions that you, you definitely have to rely on yourself as a hotel to communicate whatever you think is right or whatever you do as a best practice. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I would like to actually mention something. I don't know if any of you attended the HSMAI Day last week um, and heard maybe a panel um, which was uh, with VPs from um, Accor, Jamaira, then um, I think we also had Shangri-La and Rotana on it. And um, all of them uh, from a sales VP standpoint were talking about, you know, what um, hotels teams or sales teams, commercial teams would need to, to, to do to actually make sure that they are successful now in this new era. And I would like to point out a few things that they mentioned and uh, would be interested actually to hear all your feedback on that. So anyone who wants to jump in, but some of the points they mentioned were that, of course, you know, on top of the list is customer focused communication. Sabrina, you already mentioned it. It helps you as well as a planner uh, yeah. and relationship building. So that was for all of them the same and on top of the list. Then they were talking a lot about internal and external data to make sure that, you know, if you have data available, if you have analytics, market intelligence in any form, you know, from whatever vendor and your own CRM, you definitely go and analyze it. This is the time now to do that work and make sure, you know, that your plans are actually uh, correct moving forward. Um, and they also highlighted not to focus on the present, to actually focus on, you know, uh, mid and long term as well, because, you know, a lot of hotels apparently, especially the ones who furloughed salespeople, they are just, you know, acting like, OK, there is no event now, so I don't have to do anything. Right. So they were actually saying, no, please don't stop selling. And, you know, you need to focus on your sales team and just help them train them to become instead of order takers, hunters. So I mentioned a few different things here, uh, but these were the main points. So do you have any feedback, any of you? I could One jump of the in things 
Oh, go, go ahead. <laughs> one, of the, one of the areas we're focused on is, is we know what our customers like. We know what brings customers to our front door. And it's trying to reinterpret those things and, and explain to them how, how we're still going to keep those things happening for them, but just in a very different way, considering all the, the safety and, and concerns around that. So we're trying to reinforce all the great bits that we do, all the great bits that will change, but we'll just do even more of to make sure that they still feel welcome and, and home when they come to one of our venues. Yeah, I, I could jump to the topic of data analytics and kind of, I think the biggest problem today is that hotels don't have that or don't don't have that in a centrally located place. So if you ask them about the conversion, there's no idea about what's the end-to-end -end conversion. They might know what's the e-commerce conversion from website session to an RFP form click, but they don't know what happens after that RFP form because it goes to a BMS system and it might not be tracked and the information is just missing. Like I haven't single had a single meeting during my career that I go to a hotel and ask the end-to-end -end conversion and uh, other metrics that I would actually got an answer like this. And the problem comes now that if you start measuring now, you don't actually have enough valid uh, analytics and statistics to prove where you should improve. And, and the main point for that is that if you have it in the past, then you need to start putting it into a centrally place and trying to connect the dots if possible. But in many cases, I'm afraid that it might not be possible, but now it's the right time to put those into place that once the industry bounces back, you at least have those numbers to prove which way you should go in regards to pricing or efficiency or response rates and so forth. I think I can, uh, if I could just come back on that, uh, yeah. um, Jonas, is, is uh, having that central data and actually using that data and, and knowing what you want from that data is so mm. important. And I think there is still, particularly with meetings and events, because venues vary so much, it's, it's a little bit different to, to the bedrooms, is having that centrally and understanding that is great, but also the desperate need for really understanding data at property level um, mm. in terms of how well you're utilizing space and how well, not just the conversion of you know that online, that RFP uh, conversion, but anything that's coming direct uh, or anything that's coming into the hotel, how are you dealing with it, how quickly you're getting back to it, what is the what is the conversion and what is the typical meeting size, what is the typical lead time, really understanding all those data points that we just so take for granted in bedrooms are, are really vital for looking at meetings and events and, and, and just coming back Erica to you were mentioning the C-Event stats, uh, this may have changed recently but one of the things I found most frustrating from, from a lot of the C-Event reports and statistics is, and particularly because this is US driven, is the focus, all of those stats focus very much on group rooms and not so much on actual meetings bookings because there's a huge amount of meetings bookings out there with no bedrooms attached. And those are the things that really are gonna be vital for, of course the rooms are important, but uh, you know, they again seem to get, uh, the, the meeting space seems to get forgotten. And so also being very careful at what data you're looking at and what you're using it for and what you're trying to understand it's telling you is, is really important. That's true. Uh, Sabrina, you wanted to mention something, I, I think. I wanted to touch on the first part of that, which was the communication and the relationship side of it from an event planner's perspective. Um, this is the time for over communication. Um, I want to see what hotels are still doing. I want to hear from my account managers. Um, you know, I want to know what I can potentially look at booking in the future. Is the hotel open? How are they doing their setups? How has, has, has everything changed? Um, you know, I can hand on heart tell you probably about 20% of the brands and hotels that I work with, you know, sort of emailing over the last few years um, have been in touch. Uh, it could be that a lot of them are furloughed and they're not allowed to do that um, because you're not allowed to, in Germany, you're not allowed to work um, whilst you're furloughed or we put in Kurzarbeit, we call it here. Um, and, but in, in that same um, uh, sentence, I want to, to stress to the hotels and the brands out there that it's so, so important to over communicate right now so that you can get the business later and to reconnect with your clients and keep connected with your clients right now 
and not just pop out of the blue in January and be like, oh, it's 2021. So are you planning anything this year? And I haven't heard from you in the last six months, you know, so it, it's it is a journey that you're taking with your client. And that should be how you're doing it. And it, whether it's a bad one or a good one, you should kind of have them all along the journey along the way. Um, and that's not really been happening a lot. Uh, and very, very obviously, uh, it's not been very visible at all from my side. I think um, I completely agree with um, Sabrina because for me one of the things is looking at quality not not quantity so I have a few people that I really touch in with on a regular basis and it's really just getting their feedback on what's happening in their space mm -hmm. um, because you know for me, the best way I communicate to the hotels is to say, look, this is what, you know, um, event professionals are actually saying. So um, one of the key things that I've done is ask my hotels to do infographics of what they're currently doing mm -hmm. so that I can actually share this with um, event planners, um, you know, and event professionals. But I really think that I wouldn't be doing myself justice if I came to you in January and asked you for business. Yeah. <laughs> I would feel embarrassed because... Where have I been all this time? <laughs> all this time? It's, it's, it, it's just wrong. Um, so for me, it's really important and relationships are key during this period and after. Absolutely. And just to kind of what I want to add there is that uh, the communication path doesn't mean that you need to manually do it. There's so much tools out there that can automatize, digitalize that process that you mm -hmm. send and sequence email three weeks asking for additional information or just kind of how are you doing? It's simple as that. But uh, since the industry has been really human driven and kind of old fashioned in the way we work, that's kind of once this crisis hit we kind of acknowledge the fact that okay nobody's doing x y z things and it's kind of forgotten like the event planners uh, as sabrina said kind of nobody has been touched and if they touch on january me as a customer i don't feel welcome to that like hey where have you been absolutely yeah i think there's lots of discussions happening um you know i know there's a few different platforms that are having discussions and twitter chats and ig lives and going live on zoom and whatnot um i don't actually see the actions being taken so you know there's a lot of talk happening but i don't see a lot of action so it would be nice if if, if the actions started to happen it's interesting to to hear you to say that as well is of course specifically from the planner's perspective because uh I think you know a lot of the people on the on the um, you know session who are listening will be probably on furlough, um, and and also there will be some who are working and they feel a little bit worried about you know contacting a planner like what shall I say how shall I you know address the person what information shall I give so that I'm not coming across a little bit intrusive in any shape or form so um, but but it's great to hear again you confirming the same that you know anyone who would like to connect, please feel free to connect with you and, and share, you know, your stories. Um, but what's, what I want to add to that is that it's not just the, you know, the, as um, Jonas was saying, you know, it doesn't have to be the human element, you know, you can reach out to your customers using all sorts of sites. You, you, you can connect, connect to them using all your social media platforms if you are on them actively, which, well, quite a lot of hotels are not. Um, it, it is, uh, you know, you can also do email marketing, which is at the touch of a button. You send emails to a ton of your clients and you can get them customized. You can also, for example, um, update your website, you know, and just give updates going, hey, it's week number six. We're in lockdown. This is what we're doing. Not much. Just put a still photo. It's funny. People remember it, but at least you're giving an update and you're showing a sign of life as to what's happening at your property and you know what's happening with your team. Maybe someone started gardening. Maybe someone turned into a Michelin star chef. You don't know. <laughs> but if you don't communicate that, you know, you're 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 back way, way, way back in the race to getting that piece of business in the future. It's also, I think, being quite uh, creative about selling opportunities and and looking at how are things different. Uh, for example, so many you know the the uh, um, venues lost a lot of business to uh, new office buildings. Every time a new office building was built, there was a whole big suite of meeting space, which with social distancing isn't necessarily big enough to handle what's needed mm -hmm. now. So potentially there's an opportunity uh, for venues to you know suggest to 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 companies. Uh, you know, your space might not be big enough, but but we have. And also with the, the amount of homeworking that's been going on, um, there is a need to bring people together 
physically um, mm -hmm. to to just kind of keep that team communication awareness. You know, home working and Zoom calls and you know Skype and all these things are fantastic, but people still you know need to meet and want to meet face to face and have that contact. And so, you know, suggesting bringing, you know, bringing your, your home working team and those sorts of things together. There's, there are opportunities out there. They're, they may be few and far between, but they're there. And it's really plugging into those and making those kind of suggestions. And that actually leads quite well to my favorite question is um, uh, about technology, of course. How can technology support then, uh, you know, the my sales efforts? And yes, we heard it, it is, you know, an aspect to it from Sabrina and Jonas as well that, you know, which is automation. Uh, but also, of course, there are other aspects to technology that can at least enhance efficiency, even in a smaller team, if people start to return to the offices. So um, I think there was always a bit of um, an adoption issue <laughs> in uh, pre-COVID because people were, like Jonas mentioned as well, just put it at the you know side, like, okay, it's good, but we don't have to do it now. We don't need to do it now. Maybe, you know, we spend on something else. So. Um, what do you think, you know, how will now hotels uh, turn to technology? Will they turn to technology? And also, you know, will they actually embrace change? I think a lot of us have started to embrace change in terms of, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, event professionals or planners like myself get on social media, for example, and start to engage with brands and other event professionals and really come out and create uh, or be part of this community and it's definitely growing um, and also from the hotel side uh, I've seen lots of event sales professionals also embrace social media and join the community and get that because I guess a lot of them are seeing that this is one of the only ways we can engage and build our community right now um, in order to build that foundation for when we can get back to live events um, and so I think, yeah, it's, 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 it's a tough one, but we do have to uh, embrace it. And I think we have slowly, but surely, I think we're still very much in the, well, fetal stage. I don't think we're anywhere near um, where the beauty industry is or even the leisure travel industry is. Um, and I think a lot of it is because, um, well, we've led the leisure industry and the business travel industry lead the way for so, so many years with advertising and marketing and going digital and social media that MICE is just kind of lagging behind. You know, they have to catch up in a big way, but it's about educating and training and making sure people get to that level. So I think with all the changing behaviors outside of our work, just in our, our normal lives, whether it's ordering online and having deliveries come uh, the way we communicate with our friends and family and even and online now. I think because we were changing so many behaviours in other regards, the change of behaviours in meeting and events is a much easier step and people are prepared to take that, that step now. So it's really trying to, to take the best of all the other industries that have been before us, mm -hmm. look at what they've done really, really well and, and to catch up and almost jump over the top of them because we're, we're coming from such a low base, we can come in and create something that is brand new and perfect for what we need rather than having to fix something that may have been there for the last three or four years. Can it not be a challenge though? Uh, and that's again, just to, together with the, the previous question that, you know, of course now uh, hotels are under such a huge pressure when it comes to cost. So mm -hmm. technology usually comes with, with some investment. So um, do you think that there will be an opportunity still or it will be hard in the next uh, period? I could maybe take that one uh, in a general thought as, as we discussed earlier kind of uh, now is the time that hotels have reacted and understood that things need to change things need to happen but on the flip side of the coin the fact is that they're, they're doing nearly zero revenue or let's say a margin of what they would do normally so it's kind of the budget is not there which puts a lot of pressure to technology vendors like ourselves that hey we need you guys but we don't really have the money to it. So it, we need to come up with incentivized model and kind of uh, use our imagination in a sense that what kind of a commercial structure can we get in place that the whole, we can actually help the hotel. And I'm talking now uh, technology vendors uh, in general, that uh, if you look at the hospitality landscape, there's everyone offering two months free, three months free, get an ROI guarantee and so forth. And that needs to come from us because we are here together in a sense that if if we don't survive our technologies, uh, you don't really need it. And and therefore, kind of, we ourselves, as many other players in this industry, have come to the conclusion that let's give 
the product with as minimum investment in the beginning and then let's see how it uh, progresses in the future and once the industry bounces back then we can start to charge our normal fees so to say um i think from a visual perspective you know all of us have you know some form of phone or another and just going around and just taking a quick video of a meeting room you know and posting it you know it doesn't necessarily have to always be professionally done but i think that you know there is some 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 leverage in having that um, authenticity so, so i think that you know that's something that we should get a little bit more used to is just if a meeting room is laid up uh, you know for a particular event you know you can just go in quickly maybe go to the kitchen take a picture of the chef or this is what the chef is doing for this event look he's wearing gloves you know whatever it is um well he should be wearing gloves <laughs> <laughs> You know, and then and then and then just posting it. So I think that that is something that you know I think that venues can 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 easily be able to do, um, especially the ones that are 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 opened. Um, social media is free, so you know, <laughs> it's free to set up an account and it's free to post. So that doesn't cost you anything. So it could be that the you know it's maybe more about investing in your people and getting them to learn how to effectively use social media so that they can do exactly what Linda said, so that the event sales manager or the executive can then be the eyes and ears of the hotel and be the person posting to social media. People at the moment are craving authentic content. They're not craving, um, you know, uh, edited images where, you know, if I as an event planner go to that ballroom and it looks completely different than what I saw on their Instagram page, I'm not going to be happy about that. So I'd rather see, you know, real life, you know, maybe a filtered image, but not one of these like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't post an image from my hotel because it has to like go through marketing and be like completely edited and then you get it. No, because that's not exactly what I'm going to see it as in real life. So, you know, real authentic content is very, very important. And also hotels need to understand or venues, user generated content is your best friend. So you've got event planners day in and day out or you've had event planners or companies day in and day out using your spaces who have taken photos, who have taken videos, and who might have posted and tagged you in all these um, images and videos, use that content. That's the reason that they tagged you. You know, give other people's or real people's experiences of your product and your hotel is what I can encourage. And that's all free. <laughs> Great. Heather, I don't know if you have anything to add to the technology side. Definitely, I, I think one of the key things is is use the technology you've already got better. Um, you know, I see so many times that with uh, with sales and catering systems, diary management systems, um, you have this great technology that's invested in, it's quite expensive, and then actually using it to a minimal amount and still doing proposals on Word documents and sending out invoices in something else and uh, you still typing up function sheets manually and all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's huge investment in technology that's there it would make us so much more efficient in terms of response times. Uh, you know, there's going to be pressure on headcount as, as hotels open back up again with uh, not so much demand and, and, and less business if people need to do more with less. Um, mm -hmm. And so using existing technology is is absolutely essential. Um, and, and then the obvious one is, is that online booking is exploring online booking. So I think one of the reasons that um, live online inventory hasn't been... Um, used in the same way that we do with rooms is there's no yield management, revenue management product that can automatically tell you what price you should be selling that room at on what day. Mm -hmm. But there are many manual things that you can do. Um, I, you know, there's, there's different bits of software out there where you can be more flexible and be more focused on strategic pricing and inventory management um, and just getting smarter about it. I think we have to be realistic. It's We have to divide our small meeting space from big meeting space. I completely understand why hotels are nervous about putting large meeting rooms that break down into sections on live inventory. I wouldn't do it uh, because there's so much about the management of that space and the jigsaw puzzle of that space. But your 30 people or less, 40 people or less that are pretty straightforward, um, get that inventory out there online, get it distributed, uh, you you know it will make uh, that sale process much more efficient, uh, and you know exactly I think as Jonathan said earlier, people are much more used now to getting online mm -hmm. and booking stuff. And if it's simple and straightforward, 
they'll they'll do it. And if you're not out there, then there's a great lead in there for you, Yunus. <laughs> <laughs> <Like Heather. laughs> so to say. Uh, but yeah, I truly kind of cope with uh, what Heather said in that sense, and that's what we see now the hotels reacting and opening their eyes in the sense that, hey, we have the online booking for bedrooms, we have the online booking for our restaurant and our food and beverage that are using Deliveroo or whatever software or kind of delivery services are used. But then our MIT space, you just have an RFP form or even a phone number only in the worst case. And, and that's the reality where the technology or the booking possibilities are in the hotels today. And, and there's uh, players out there, including us, uh, who are solving this issue. But there's, let's say, so many hotels that are out in the world that don't have any solution in place. So mm. there needs to be great players solving this and even hotels solving this themselves, because that's the new standard that has to be that uh, you can book that meeting room or event space easily online. You can see the pricing. It goes to the operational system of the hotel the same way as any bedroom booking goes. And, and thankfully now, the, open, the eyes have been opening up through, from the hoteliers uh, due to this crisis. I think that's great, I, and, and probably we could start another conversation on, you know, the um, you know putting everything online when it comes to meetings and events. I think it's a very exciting topic. So maybe Rita will will actually end up putting a, a panel together for that. I'm mindful of the time, and I would like to just pose a final question, uh, which will be more like just giving some tips uh, to uh, people who listen into. So. Uh, I'm sure there are lots of resources out there and we discussed before we actually started this call that um, a lot of them are not really specific to meetings and events. So um, I just wanted to mention a few and would like to also see if you have anything that I don't, I can't think of that you would suggest for anyone listening in to also maybe look into when it comes to, you know, any kind of resources that they can utilize now or study. So um, what I was looking at is Amadeus and HSMAI, so they do have an, and they also cooperated to actually work on different guides for various different part of the business from marketing to sales to meetings and events. So it's definitely something that could be uh, checked on their website. Um, there is also a company called Upmail. And of course, I, I have to also praise my company, Nolan. So we also put together um, a very informative, huge section on our website for um, meetings and events and, and you know, any resources uh, that you would like to really read or watch. So uh, I don't know if you have any other suggestions for people who listen in. Embrace social media. <laughs> <laughs> Go through all your social media accounts and see how much of mice is represented on those feeds and not just women in bathtubs drinking champagne staring at windows. <laughs> Uh, leisure images are wonderful, but it would be much more powerful if you actually dressed up your meeting spaces and showed that off for a second, and more than often. One thing I, what I would add there is that uh, to ask for help or kind of ask for guidance. We have seen the fact that uh, hoteliers and uh, resources currently working, they have no... There's not a one person who understands the whole funnel. And, and sometimes there's nobody who understands the MIT funnel. So as companies who work in this field, the guidance and the help on that, we, and I would say all the other players out in the market, we're happy to help and kind of consult, nevertheless, if our product is used or not, because that's our common goal to help this industry kind of move to the next generation technology. I think one thing to, to remember that there's more to hotels then meeting rooms, there's so much space in a hotel that can be utilized for your events, whether it's whole accommodation floors, which you can convert into different areas or restaurants and bars, or even lobbies and car parks. It's amazing how you can dress mm -hmm. up a car park into something really, really amazing. So push for different options and, and ask your, your hotels to, to come up with the ideas because there's plenty of space between all those walls. Mm -hmm. I definitely I echo. Um, Sorry, um, because one of my hotels, they do uh, picnic meetings, um, you know, and, you know, they're in Switzerland. So you can imagine looking at the Swiss Alps, you know, and doing a picnic meeting. I, I haven't done it yet because obviously I, I can't go anywhere. But I think that's one of the first things that I want to do. So I think it's about us also thinking outside of yeah. what we normally do for meetings, but then looking at other ways um, you know, of utilizing that space. So I definitely echo Jonathan, definitely. 
Yeah, and, and I think just to just to add to the both of those points is really understand the value and capacity and opportunity in your space. So mm -hmm. as a venue, look at every area, look at every every function room, bedroom, as, a, as John says, restaurant, bars, open space halls. What is the opportunity? What is the? How many people could I get in here? And particularly as we know, we're going to have more limited capacity. What is that capacity? If my room for 16 now only takes 20 people, then I need to focus on the opportunity of that room for 20 people. How can I maximize that? Um, don't necessarily settle for those lower numbers because in a panic, it's an opportunity and we just want to fill that space. Really understand the opportunities you know, of all of that space and, and work on that jigsaw puzzle of filling that in the best way possible. Great, thank you so much for all of that. I think, you know, I, I, in, in summary, um, it is all about being creative, isn't it? Communicating, social media, of course. I can't <laughs> forget about Sabrina's social media. Um, <laughs> we heard it a few times and it's a very valid point. Thank you for that. Um, and I think, you know, again, technology and analytics. So like uh, Jonas mentioned it, I think it's very valid that um, speak to um, anyone in the industry not just hotels to hotels but any other key players just like the vendor side like you know ourselves as well where um, we can help with some um, you know suggestions or tips as well and it can just be a conversation it's not you know related to an actual business exchange in that sense so thank you very much for the panelists for joining us today um, and supporting WHTT with this uh, conversation I hope it will actually spark some more interest into meetings and events and hopefully we can you know uh, come back again very very soon and you know have another conversation so thank you very much for your time and have a lovely afternoon Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.